There's been a question asked about how conveyors are really different from stocks in Insight Maker, so I thought I'd put together a short video and see if I could uh, clarify the, the question. So in terms of doing the configuration, there is, there is very little difference between configuring a stock and configuring a conveyor. And, and the whole difference happens right here in behavior. So for a stock, it just says you configure it to be a store. There are two options here store or conveyor and if you configure configure a conveyor you you select and tell it's a conveyor and then you tell it delay and i'm not sure delay is really the appropriate label for this what it's really saying is how many slots are in this conveyor so i said it there's six and currently i'm running this this model in years so essentially this conveyor has six slots in it for that vary over a period of six year time frame. And the, the way that impacts the what happens with your model depends upon which way you use it. If you apply an initial value, let me go ahead and say the initial value is three. Now I'm assigning the same initial value to the stock, stock and the conveyor. If I go ahead and then look at this, notice that the stock initial value is three. The value for the conveyor starts at 0.5 and increases until it gets to three. The reason for that is when you ask about the value of the conveyor itself, it's telling you the value that's in the, the last slot of the conveyor. Now, because I assigned an initial value of three and I told it the conveyor was, was six slots long, it took that value of three and it equally distributed it across all six elements. So there's there's 0.5 in every one of those slots. If I told it that that the initial value was 6, it would then go ahead and put 1 in every one of those slots. So the stock is 6, and the conveyor has 1 in every one of the 6 slots. So if, if you were referring to the value of the conveyor, it simply tells you what's in the last slot. If you want to know the the t conveyor total, which is all of the slots, you, ha you have to use this notation to say, I, I want the value of the whole conveyor as opposed to just the last slot in the conveyor. If rather than assign an initial value, I said that if you assign an initial value, it gets distributed across all of the slots. If I simply say I want an inflow, this flow into the stock, now the, the initial value of the stock and the conveyor are both zero. I have an inflow of one into the stock and I have inflow to the conveyor of one. And if I look at what happens, because I'm looking at the value of the conveyor, which is actually that last slot, there's nothing in that last slot for the first five time periods, and then the one that got put in the first slot on the first time period moved to the second or third. And finally, when you get to the, to the sixth time period, well, now there's actually something in this last slot. But if you ask about the total in the whole conveyor, that is the same value as the stock itself. So it's, it, de depending about what you want to know, you have to look at the conveyor differently. If I want to know what's available to take out of it, then I just refer to the conveyor. If I want to know about all that's in the conveyor completely, then I need to use a different notation and, and use a variable to, set, to help me understand what's in the, the conveyor. Now, if, if I go ahead and say that I want to initialize them both at three. So the stock has three and the conveyor has three, but the conveyor has a half in each one of six slots. And then I say I want the outflow to be one each time period. And, and there is no inflow. So, so this is just a stock that's going to be diminished over time because of the outflow. If I now run this, notice that the stock starts at three and diminishes over the the three time periods 
to, to zero, the conveyor starts at point five because that's what's in the slot and it continues along till it gets to here and then it goes to zero. What's happening, if I go ahead and, and configure this and, uh, and look at look at what's moved to stock and what's moved to conveyor, configure those, say, moved to conveyor and moved to stock. So I can now look at those. Notice that that moved to stock, it's it's moving one every time unit, but moved by conveyor, it's not moving as much because you can only take out what's in the last slot of a conveyor. It doesn't make any difference how big you you define the flow to be. It can't take what's not there. So you usually, if you're doing an outflow from a conveyor, you want to you want to look at what's in the last slot and test it to find out if if what's there is what you expect or what you want to be there. So the there, there's very specific differences between the two, and you need you need to think about them slightly differently. Otherwise, you end up getting yourself in trouble. Things happen that you don't quite expect because you forget about the fact that that there are a number of slots in the conveyor. You put stuff in the first slot, and it moves through over time periods and comes out on when it's in the last slot. But you can't take any more than what's in the last slot. And if you ask about the value of the conveyor, it tells you what's in the last slot. If you want to know about what's in the whole conveyor, then you need to use a different notation to ask about what's in that whole container itself, and, and that will give it to you. So this, uh, this particular insight will, uh, will be linked into Sysnet in linked to the same location where the video is so that you can come in here and and interact with this model to get a better sense of of how unexpectedly the conveyor behaves at at certain times and and also beware that that things end up being very different whether or not you say that I want to allow a stock to have negative values or not if I allow them to have negative values, then I can take stuff out of them that's not really there so that the conveyor itself goes negative or the stock goes negative. For certain types of models, because of what it is that you're modeling, having negative stocks makes no sense. Um, I, If I'm talking about taking water out of a swimming, swimming pool, I can't take the level of the swimming pool to a negative value. It just doesn't physically make sense in the in the context of what I'm modeling. So I uh, hope this helps, and I'll see you in the next video probably soon. Bye.